One of the most interesting cognitive biases is called the sunk cost effect. Have you ever heard of this one? Let's imagine that you guys have paid 400 euros to go to an outdoor festival. When you paid for it, it seemed pretty cool. But now the weekend is coming and the situation is changing. Well, your favorite band is actually not gonna play and that's the reason why you, know, you bought the ticket in the first place. You were supposed to go there with your best friend and your best friend is not coming. Now the weather is gonna be terrible, all right, and you feel a bit sick. So you know you're not really gonna have a great time. And now, you know, actually, some of your best friends just call you and tell you, wow, we just bought this new awesome video game. You really want to try this one, right? Why don't you come uh, Saturday and uh, we have an awesome uh, video game night? Who among you would still go to the festival because, you know, you paid 400 euros? <laughs> Pretty much everyone would still go to the festival. <laughs> if you chose to go to the festival, you are actually being irrational. Why? Because based on the evaluation of available information that you have here, you're not optimizing your situation. You know you're not gonna have a good time at the festival, all right? When you know that you're gonna have a great time at your friend's place playing video game. These 400 euros have been lost anyway. You can't do anything about it. The sunk cost bias is extremely powerful. It means that when we have invested money, energy, time, etc., in something, right? It seems to us that we need to take that into account to maximize utility. Let me show you how it applies to organizations. It's actually been studied in a fantastic article in 1985 by two authors, Arkes and Bloomer. They asked people, all right, you are the president of an airline company. You've invested $10 million of a company's money into a research project. Right? The purpose was to build a plane that would not be detected by conventional radar. Now your project is 90% completed and another firm begins marketing a plane that cannot be detected by radar. It's also apparent that their plane is much faster, more economical than your plane. Now the question is, should you invest the last 10% of the research funds, right, so $1 million, to finish your radar blank plane? And the answer is, 85% yes, even though you know the project is going to fail. Now, if you ask the question slightly differently, you're still the president of this airline company, and you receive a suggestion, which is to use $1 million to develop a plane that would not be detected by conventional radar. However, it's apparent that another plane is being constructed by you know, another company, and it's going to be much better. Situation is identical, $1 million for an underperforming plane, but the difference here is that the project has not started. And this time, the answer is only 17%. So why does this happen? Why would people who are already invested in the project be willing to, you know, lose a lot of money, even though they know it's not gonna be worth it? The same reason why you guys still want to go to the festival, even though you know it's going to suck. A good explanation is the prospect theory. You have two key findings in the prospect theory, still debated, that are directly involved in the sunk cost fallacy. The first thing is that losses have a much more significant emotional impact than an equivalent amount of gains. So if I tell you, for example, you have 50% chance to gain $1,000 or 100% chance to gain $500. Who would choose the 50% chance to gain $1,000? Who would choose the 100% chance to gain $500? Pretty much everyone. Interesting. Now if I tell you, okay, you have 50% chance of losing $1,000 or 100% chance of losing $500. Who would take the 50% chance of losing $1,000? <laughs> Pretty much everyone now, all right? So you see, this is what we call loss aversion. 
Basically, if you do the graph, it would look like this. Here are the gains in dollars, all right? And here is the value that you give subjectively to things. Normally, if we were perfectly rational, the graph should look like a line, this line, which means that if you lose 10 euros, then your perceived loss should be 10 euros. But it's not what happens when you know for sure that you're going to lose money, it actually impacts you much more than if you know that you're going to win money. Now, there's another thing which is called the diminishing sensitivity. All right? At some point, when you start losing quite a lot, every extra step that you lose doesn't seem that problematic. And the same for winning. It doesn't change much between 100 euros and 110. However, between 0 and 10, it actually changes a lot. So, for example, a can man found that people are willing to go out of their way to save $5 on a $15 calculator, but they would not you know, do the same to save $5 on $125. By doing so, we are being irrational. In both cases, we gain $5. It should be exactly the same reasoning, but we have a different sensitivity. Experiments span various fields, including psychology, economics, organizational behavior. So these are really impactful elements that actually change the way we perceive business, the way we perceive economy, the way we behave in organizations.